Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. It's that time to do another glue test and we have to see how well did these hold up after another year. For those of you who don't know, a couple years ago I conducted the most comprehensive glue test on the internet comparing 62 different glues in four different orientations, thousands and thousands and thousands of individual tests. That test was a lot of fun and it actually ended up changing what glues I use in the shop. And if you want to see that information, I'll leave links to that video and data down below. But that test and all of the iterations of it didn't answer the question of how well will the glue last over time. And unfortunately, the only way to actually test that is to wait a long time. So for several years now, I've been storing test samples in my garage. And every six months, I bring 10 sets of them in and we test them. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to test all 60 some glues. So for the long term test over the next 30 years or so, I'm just testing seven of them. They're the key samples from each one, the ones that did really well that I wanted to find out more about. So for the test, we have 315 hide glue, homemade hide glue, Type Bond 2, 2P10 Super Glue Gel, West System Epoxy, which I actually don't have any actual West System Epoxy right now in the shop, DAP Plastic Resin, and then the latecomer Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Three years ago, I used those seven different glues, and I glued up over 2,500 of these blocks on boards, put them up in my garage, and let them sit. I chose to leave them in the garage because it is relatively dry there. However, there is the full moisture swing throughout the year. So they will expand and contract as a moisture swing wheels. They won't expand and contract quite as much as they will in an air conditioned house, but I kind of want to see what they are in the worst case scenario. And it's been really interesting to see how the glues have changed over time. I honestly didn't expect to see much change over the first five years or so. But I was surprised. So let's go over to the computer and take a closer look at the data. So welcome to my computer. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. And this is where all of the magic happens. Uh, this, is, this is happy here. All the way at the top here, you can see all of the glues that have been tested. Each one of these lines is a different glue. And then each of these, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, is an individual glue test of that particular glue. And not only are they in this, which is long grain to long grain, but then here we have long grain to end grain. And then down here we have gap filling. And then down here we also have exterior conditions. Uh, so it's very interesting to see how the different glues withstand different things. Um, and they are color coded, so the brighter the red, the poorer it did. The brighter the green, the better it did. And then all the way down at the bottom we have, you can look at the specifics. Long grain to long grain, long grain to end grain, gap filling, exterior conditions, all of them together, all of them but without the exterior conditions, and then hide glue. I'm going to leave all of this for you to go through if you haven't seen this before. I have several videos on how I did the test and actual live videos of doing this test. But today, I'm just looking at these ones down here. These are the annual tests. This is the first one that happened zero. This was three years ago and six months and one year and 18 months and two years and 30 months. And now we're down here to three years. So we have three years of data and it's really interesting to see how these have changed. A lot of them have stayed pretty much the same. And I kind of expected to see a slight downturn in how they actually work. But a couple of them surprised me. Here is the averages of all of them put together. So the average of the listing is kind of interesting. Uh, this one down here is the average uh, with the adjustments. And the adjustments are, sometimes they didn't break right along the glue. And so if there's a color here in the white area, that means that it broke. And I actually have a small rubric up here so you can look at um, what these breakage colors mean. But basically, I wanted to keep track of the ones the time where the, just the glue broke and times where it took the wood away. The whole purpose of this test, and this is the big thing, is not to test the wood, but to test the glue itself. And so the setup is a shearing test that is set up to test just the glue and force the glue to break. And most of the time, on most of the tests, I can get just the glue to break. But that means I'm going to be testing that joint way past the point at which the wood would break. So keep in mind, any raw data number over about 150 is going to generally break the wood before the glue breaks. And any PSI over 200 is going to break the wood before the glue breaks. Now, different woods are going to respond to that a little differently, um, but those are the numbers. Anything over 150, it's probably going to be stronger than the wood. So anything in that range, you're okay. So back down here to the numbers year after year, we can look at the actual chart. And most of these are doing pretty close to what I expected. There's just a slow down range. Here is the, the Elmer's Wood Glue Max, the Tight Bond 2, uh, the Homemade High Glue, 
the regular high grew has actually had a little bit of an increase, not much. Um, it was interesting, both of those grew a little bit over the first year and then started to decline a bit. The really interesting one is that the West System epoxy kind of was a little bit wavy off the bit, but then started to rise. And so that gives you an idea that these numbers aren't exact. I only did 10 samples. I would love to do 100 samples of every one, but I don't have that much time or space in my garage. But it is kind of interesting to see that there is a rather consistent rise over the last two years. On the other hand, the 2P10 gel glue nosedived, and that's the only one that has gone well below 150. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, it, it's not a long-term glue. It's, it's a very brittle glue. And that's one of the things I'm noticing is that the more brittle the glue, the shorter its life is. If it's a little more flexible, it's got a little bit more life in it. And a good example of that is the DAP plastic resin. It performed really well in the initial tests. It has a little bit of a spike, um, but it has steadily gone down since then. So it is one that is losing its strength. It is a very brittle glue and it doesn't expand as much as you would expect it to. If you take into account the breakages, uh, then you're gonna be getting all sorts of other weird numbers. And so that's why I'm not normally looking at the breakage numbers uh, because <laughs> it's kind of a mess. But it does kind of give you an idea about which ones are taking more of the wood with it than not. But with all that being said, I am in love with these numbers and seeing how things come out because it's very, very fascinating to see the averages and how things react and how things show up over time. So there are the actual numbers. And if you really want to dive into this test, um, I have a bunch of other videos on how I did the test, what those numbers mean. And there's a lot of other information that is included in that spreadsheet uh, that I'm not touching on here. But if you want to see that, I'll have videos where I actually talk through the whole thing and explain how to read the sheet. Um, there's, there's a lot of information on there. And it is, um, it, it's one of my favorite things. I love doing in-depth studies just to put numbers on it rather than, oh, this one feels better. And, oh, I really like this one over that one. Uh, which one actually does well? And all that being said, I'm not really testing which glue will hold better than others. Most of the time, with most woods, all of these glues will hold perfectly fine and the wood will break long before the glue joint does. With the exception of the 2P10 super glue. Um, quick bond works well, but after about a year or so, it becomes so brittle that it will actually fail long before the wood does. For me, one of the big purposes of the test was to determine when should I use particular glues? Because I use a collection of different glues and I use them for different purposes at different times because they each have pros and cons. No one of them is better than any other. And with the long-term test, it's been really fascinating to see how well, they're pretty well standard. Yeah, there's some variation, but it's mostly within the variability of the test. And for a lot of them, they actually do really well. Other than, of course, the super glue, which yeah, we kind of expected that. It was a very, very surprising start. It's an incredibly strong glue right off the bat, but over time it gets brittle and the expansion and contraction of the wood, even on small scales like these little blocks, can cause it to fail. I'm interested to see if some of the trends keep going up, if the West System epoxy continues to climb, uh, if the high glues continue to decline. That'll be interesting. So with all that being said, we'll continue doing the test. I'm going to do another six month and a year, and the next video will be coming out around the turn of the next year. Um, I think I'm going to be doing the six month and a year through five years, and then after that, I'm just going to be doing one year at a time separation. If you have questions, I have the whole spreadsheet put down below, as well as videos describing it, videos describing the tests, and all things like that. Definitely look through those. But if you have anything other than that, throw comments down below. I do read through all of them, and I answer as many of those as I can get to, and that does actually help out the channel. Anytime you hit like, share, subscribe, and specifically commenting down below, Thank you. Uh, that does help the channel get us in front of more people. And this is one of those videos where you might want to send it to someone you know and say, hey, my glue is performing better than your glue. Uh, <laughs> it's always kind of fun to throw that into a rivalry. So I hope you like that. And if you would like to support this channel, we have a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic and wonderful benevolent people over on Patreon. They are the ones who literally sponsor this test. Uh, this I have, I have thousands and thousands of dollars into this test. And without patrons and members, uh, things like this would not happen. So thank you for that. If you'd like to help out and uh, provide for the next test, then think about becoming a patron. Link's in the description or click the little join button and become a member. We have special perks for both as well as a uh, live hangout coming out specifically just for patrons. So thank you and until next time, have a wonderful day. I love working with spreadsheets. They always get me into sticky situations.